Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I will present you the result of a paper co-authored with um, Cédric Dupré and uh, Suso Bignandi, which is a bit complementary to what uh, Mark just uh, presented, because here what we will look at is um, how um, digitalization of a firms will impact uh, its employment growth. More precisely, what we are interested in is really to uh, analyze or uh, within a firms if this firm is using uh, one digital technology, and I will explain you in a second how we defined it, how it can influence its employment growth, but also how it will have an incidence on the composition of its workforce in terms of level of education and in terms of age also. Um, one of the strengths of our paper is uh, the, the database that we have, uh, which is very rich data sets for uh, the uh, um, all the private firms, uh, non-financial in Belgium, for a very large period from 2003 to 2019. So we can uh, do a lot with that uh, data sets. What are the three main takeaways that you can have from, um, from this paper is, first of all, that uh, when we start looking at the data, what we found is that um, ICT investments for firms are more um, kind of a smooth process. We do not observe, like for robots, a very spike investment at some point of time. It's more like every year they are uh, likely to be uh, above a, a certain threshold. What we also find is that um, there is a, a, a clear uh, positive relationship between the fact that a firm is digitalized and its employment growth. So it will be uh, more likely to, to have a higher employment growth over the, the, the period, and this will be especially true for larger firms. And finally, uh, what we will confirm is um, about the, the, the literature on, on the uh, more skill-biased effect of digitalization is that in digitalized firm there is a shift from low educated to higher educated workers and also a shift from um, less older workers and going uh, to middle aged uh, workers. So, um, of course, this paper is a part of a very broad literature uh, already looking at um, how new technology having an incidence on employment. Every time a new technology is arriving, there is also this question, is it likely to replace our workers or not? And so there are basically two types of, uh, of theories. The first one is that if the technology can replace the workers, you will have this substitution effect, and so there will be a, a lower level of employment and a higher uh, unemployment. On the other hand, there is also the fact that new technology brings also new jobs, uh, can uh, have, we just uh, see it, a, a, a higher impact on the, the productivity of the firms, and so they can grow faster, and they can be uh, part of uh, an employment creation in that sense. And so uh, the literature is trying to look at which effect is, um, is having the, the, the higher weight in that, uh, in that debate. And so this is how we also uh, will look at this um, effect on, on employment. Um, so, uh, let me explain you uh, what is our uh, sample. It's coming from a very broad data set um, that is merging information from, uh, on one side, the National Bank of, Be of Belgium about firms, and on the other side, um, information from the Crossroads Bank for Social Security, which have all the information about the workers working within those firms. And what is also interesting for us, um, is that in this data set we really have the information on the characteristics of those workers. And so um, uh, we are merging those two uh, data sets and um, for our estimation we will focus only on the firms that we observe during the entire period. So all the firms that we will look at are active from 2003 to 2019. Um, we end up with uh, 35,800 firms, which is approximately 29% uh, of uh, our sample, and it represents really a large uh, share of the workers in Belgium, um, which is 1.1 million every year um, on average, and it, this is 55% uh, um, of the sample. So um, why this data set is also interesting is that um, regarding the information that we have about firms, 
we can identify um, their expenditures and um, what is the um, sector of activity of their suppliers for those uh, expenditures. And so at a very uh, detailed level, we will um, identify what we um, flag as ICT um, expenditure, and we will uh, compute the share of ICT expenditure among the total expenditure of the firm. We will do this for um, all our firms, and we'll also compute the median level of those um, ICT expenditure. And what we will do is to um, identify a firm as digitalized if uh, every year over the period they are always above this median of our sample. By doing this, we end up with uh, almost 15% of our sample, which is um, considered as digitalized. And what we will do is um, to take all the other firms that are sometimes above the media and sometimes, uh, sometimes not, as the control group, and we will compare um, both, uh, both groups together. Why uh, this type of, um, of estimation? Um, this is also linked to the fact that when analyzing the data, we just see, um, as I said before, that there is no um, one spike of investment at some point of time. So there are really a, a correlation between the level of ICT expenditure that you did one year and the one you did the year before or the year after. We also look at the correlation between the maximum level of expenditure at some point of time and there is also a high correlation between this maximum and the average level of expenditure that the firm has and also regarding the uh, X year before, X year after, it's really uh, highly correlated. And on the other hand, for those firms who um, tend to invest less in ICT, there is also a correlation with, which is less strong, but still there, that uh, if there is a minimum level of expenditure, it remains um, uh, strongly correlated over the years. Let me, uh, before explaining you our uh, strategy, just showing uh, some descriptive statistics. Um, the first one is that um, our median share of ICT expenditures uh, is uh, almost constant over time, and uh, it represents 0.6% of the total expenditure of firms for uh, the economy. Another important fact is that uh, we observe a shift from um, ICT goods, such as um, investment in computers, to more ICT services, like more uh, telecommunication activities or uh, web portals, etc. And so there is this um, long-term shift from ICT goods to ICT uh, services. And finally, we also um, uh, observe heterogeneities across um, the sectors that we have. And what is also, um, this graph is also showing is that we have firms that are considered as digitalized in all those sectors. Even if our um, definition is quite strict, we still observe some digitalized firms in all the sectors. And it's going from a very low level of digitalization in some sectors, um, like uh, construction, for example, to very high level. Uh, we think about uh, professional scientific um, activities, for example, where we have more than 50% of the firm that are considered as uh, digitalized. In terms of um, our uh, methodology, what we um, are doing is to look at um, the long difference over the period of uh, the logarithm of our employment for every firm. Um, so since we uh, have this smooth process of uh, ICT investment, we cannot really do a before and after strategy. So what we really look at is of putting um, digitalized firm in one group and the other uh, non-digitalized one and looking at what's happening over this, uh, this long period. Um, we also um, are already restricting our sample to uh, those firms who are surviving all those times. So this is already a group of uh, more homogeneous firms. But we also add some control variables. 
um, which is uh, basically the uh, initial level of employment of the firm, which is quite important in explaining the uh, future employment growth, and also uh, the sector of activity of the firms, which is very detailed at the uh, NACE four digit level. And for uh, all the estimation that we will do, we have a first one which is unweighted, so uh, meaning that the coefficient that we get is for an average firm in the economy. And the other one which is weighted with the size of the firm, which means that uh, here we are putting mon more weight on the uh, larger firms, which means that this is more uh, on the aggregate for the economy, what could be the, uh, the effect of um, the relationship between digitization and employment growth. Okay, so um, our first result is uh, really this baseline estimation that I, I just gave you. It's showing that there is a strong positive and statistically significant um, relationship between digitalization and the employment growth of firm. Over our entire period, this is shown as a um, 19 percentage uh, increase, which means that on average, every year, a digitalized firm has a 1.1 percent more increase in the employment than the non-digitalized one. When we uh, put the weight on a larger firm, we have a stronger impact um, with a coefficient um, that gives uh, um, a raise to 34% uh, of the uh, employment, which is 1.8% per year. And so it also means, so the fact that we have this stronger impact on the weight, it means that uh, for larger firms, we have a stronger um, relationship between digitalization and um, employment growth. Of course, uh, we were aware to the fact that um, this result could suffer some endogeneity issue, meaning that it can be that this is already uh, firms that are growing faster that will be likely to implement those um, new technology. And so to tackle this issue, a first uh, test that we made is that we split uh, our period in two sub uh, sample. The first one uh, going from 2003 to 2010, we already look at the uh, employment growth rate uh, within those firms. And then we redo our baseline estimation for the second period, controlling for the fact that we measure the previous growth um, before. Our results are still um, positive and, and significant in that, uh, in that case. What we also do is to control for uh, other characteristics of the firm that can be related to their uh, previous performance. So meaning that we control for the initial level of capital uh, in 2003 and the uh, level of productivity of the firms also at the beginning of the period. Even if uh, we will see that uh, the effort is slightly reduced, um, our results remain and are uh, positive and uh, statistically significant. Um, finally, for this um, um, issue about uh, how the firms are performing, we also wanted to look at um, separately the firms who are losing employment over the period and the ones who are growing over the period. And what is interesting in our results is that the effect is stronger for uh, those shrinking firms. So meaning uh, uh, that if they um, have this ICT um, already in the, uh, um, within the firms, the uh, employment is more stable or they can maybe um, more easily face uh, external shock or slowing down the reduction of their uh, employment. We still find a positive effect on the firms that are growing if they are uh, digitalized, but the effect is slightly um, um, lower. Another thing that we wanted to um, be sure about is how our results can be related to the uh, strategy that we use and the definition that we have. So um, a, first test, uh, a first test, this is difficult to say, um, that we made is uh, changing the period that we are covering. Um, first of all, we tried to uh, delete the first year and the last year. We also split the sample into two or three um, sub-periods. Sub um, 
This is interesting, first of all, because it increased the number of firms that we will observe and for which we are doing the estimation. And um, it's, it's also showing that the result is not depending on some point in time uh, in, in the analysis. Even if uh, it's important to mention that we see uh, some difference in the magnitude of the coefficient for earlier periods, which appears to have uh, a, a stronger uh, relationship between digitalization and, um, and employment growth. And finally, we also try to um, uh, test different definition of our uh, digitalization. Um, what we did is, uh, first of all, to have as a control group only the one who, uh, which are never uh, above the median, and it doesn't change our results. We also uh, tested if we um, take the ICT expenditure per worker, if it's changed the, the result, but this is still uh, a positive uh, effect. And finally, we uh, also look at um, different types of ICT, and we see that there is a stronger relationship between digitalization and employment growth if we look at ICT goods, rather than uh, ICT uh, services. Um, what is also uh, quite interesting with uh, our data set, and it's quite new um, in the literature and, 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 and rare to have, is that within the firms we have the information for all the workforce about the level of education and um, also interesting in terms of uh, new technology about their age. And so, um, and, and yeah, and, and the first one also is that we can really uh, see the dynamics of the uh, labor force. What does that mean? It means that for every firm, we can look at the number of people who enter the firm every year and also the number of people who uh, leave the firm, which means that um, in our baseline, the uh, relationship that we observe is a net employment effect. What we want to know is, is it due to higher entry within the firms or is it due to less exit from the firms? And what our estimation are showing is that, in fact, there is indeed higher uh, number of people entering the firm, but there is also a higher number of people exiting the firm. So, um, both effects are a bit uh, compensated, but the fact that there are more numerous entries is um, stronger because we have this positive net, uh, net effect. This could mean um, restructuring of the workforce of the firm, so we wanted to know for um, which type of workers this dynamic can, uh, can, can occur. And so what we did is to look at how the share of a specific characteristic is varying over time, depending on the fact that the firm is digitalized or not. So we will look at how the share of low educated, for example, within a firm will be different in 2003 between digitalized and non-digitalized, and the difference in 2019. And what we um, observe is that there is um, a, a negative relationship between the fact that the firm is digitalized and the share of low educated workers. And uh, conversely, there is a positive relationship between the share of highly educated workers and the fact that the, uh, the firm is, um, is digitalized. The other aspect that we look at is the age of the, of the workers. Um, what we see in the descriptive statistics is uh, that there is, of course, a trend with the population aging. There is a trend uh, that shows a larger share of older workers within firms. What our results are showing is that this increase in the share of older workers is less likely to occur in digitalized firms, and they are more likely, uh, conversely, to hire middle-aged uh, workers who maybe um, fit better with the, the necessary um, skills or adaptability that is uh, asked by the firm. We um, finally did um, an estimation depending on the sector of activity uh, of the firm. We only focus on, um, 
on some sectors of activity just to have enough uh, observation in terms of uh, the number of firms we have in our estimation. We saw at the beginning that there is a variation in the intensity of the use of digitization and also um, it can be that this is used differently uh, within those firms. And what our uh, results are showing is that um, the relationship between digitalization and employment growth is stronger if we look at the manufacturing industry, the construction or transport. Conversely, for some uh, other sectors, we can see in some cases um, that there is a negative uh, relationship between digitalization and employment. And this is the case uh, when we account for the size uh, of the firms in trade and uh, professional scientific and technical activities, for example. Um, so let me uh, conclude with those uh, three main takeaways from this presentation. The first one is that ICT investment within firms are be, appear to be a, a smooth process and not a, a, a lump sum investment at some point in time. Um, the digitalization of a firm uh, appears to be uh, positively related to its employment growth and we measure this uh, relationship to a 1.1% increase uh, per year. But the effect is really heterogeneous uh, in terms of the firm size, in terms of the period you are looking at, in terms also of the types of workers or the sector of activities. This means that we have to um, think about and further explore um, these results, notably in terms of uh, sector ac of activity, for example, and this could lead to some um, different types of policies. The one which is important is often highlighted in, in this literature is the upskilling of the workers because the one who are losing uh, or more likely to lose uh, the jobs are the uh, low educated or the older workers and they are also the one with uh, the lower level of digital uh, skills. Of course, there is uh, this discussion which, which is coming and already uh, appear in the, in the first discussion, what about AI? With should be the, the, the next uh, new technology. Is it um, the same effect that we can expect it, yes or no? Um, this will be for, for, for further research. And finally, one uh, last thing that we wanted to explore and which is more feasible probably than AI is uh, to what extent the um, potential higher performance of the firms will materialize into higher wages. And if it's the case, to which type of workers those wages will increase or not. That will be um, our next step. Thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, that's it.